Hello everybody, welcome back to Finance with K, this side of YouTube where we focus on personal finance and we focus more on you the person than the personal than the finance itself so welcome to another segment on finance with k my name is k and i am a money management coach so let's get to today's topic today i want us to talk about five mistakes that property investors do that is costing them or that it's making them not to make money remember when you get into an investment it's all about numbers it's all about the money making money for you the money that you have invested so i'm going to talk about five things that are costing you as a property investor that is making you not to see a positive return on investment number one not doing a feasibility study of the area where you are buying a property mm -hmm. so people they buy properties and they don't really go around and do a research they don't check stats of the area where they're buying the property because unfortunately when it comes to property the area where you're buying the property will tell you how much the rental income should be or the rental that you're charging should be on that property it doesn't matter if your property is the most beautiful one it doesn't matter if the property looks expensive but what matters is that in that area how much does a two-bedroom with one bathroom cost and if you don't do a feasibility study and if you don't do a research around the area and you buy in an area for affluent people yet you are targeting um, people that are not affluent let's make an example you can't charge certain prices in Soweto and you might charge Soweto prices in certain but affluent people they always associate quality with high price so you might still even if your property is less money you might end up not even getting tenants because people in affluent places they always believe that high quality is high price so why is your property less than what is required in the area and again you will end up not making money because there's no way that you're going to buy a property as we're here we are talking about somebody who bought a property using home loan so basically what i'm saying is that a one million property in Centen, it's not going to be the same as a one million property in soweto meaning that if you are going to charge less in Centen, you're not going to make money and if you're going to charge more in soweto you're not going to make money so make sure that before you can buy a property do a research, know your target market, where do they stay, which kind of jobs do they work and how much do they get paid. Don't just go and buy a property. Another example, buy, buying a property for student accommodation in an area where there is no college or university. So which students are going to come and stay in that property? So do feasibility study of the area because if you don't, it will cost you on your pocket the second thing it's you not knowing all the costs that are involved in maintaining a property so if you are going to be buying a property which you're going to be renting out and it's in a complex or a security estate there are other costs that are not there if it's just a standalone and not in a complex so things like your levers you need to know before you buy how much levers am i gonna pay in this property in this area so don't just pay and then realize later that you need to pay levers and you have already budgeted to only pay the home loan seven thousand rand and now there's this extra three thousand rand that you need to pay for levers so you also need to know how much levers do i pay here and how much rates do i pay and water how does it work and uh, all know all the costs that are involved when it comes to maintaining how often am i going to paint this property does it have a fireplace inside how much is, is it going to cost me how often should i change the painting things like that because as a homeowner you are the one or as the landlord you are the one that pay the maintenance cost of the property when you're renting it out and those maintenance costs they are going to be something called expenses when it comes to your investment which you need to consider because they will be taking money out of that rental income that you're expecting the third thing it goes hand in hand with number two confusing or 
thinking revenue into profit. And a lot of people, they think their revenue is their profit. The revenue is the money that you get when you are, okay, in this example, it's your rental income. Let's make an example. There you are, you have this property where you are charging a rental of 10,000 rand. The 10,000 rand is your revenue. You made a sale, which is you renting out this property. But that 10,000 rand, it's not your profit because remember the expenses we spoke about in number two, you still need to take them out. You still need to pay. Maybe there's a gardener that needs to come and, and maintain the place. You need to consider those things. So don't confuse your revenue as your profit and you think you're making money but you're not making money yes you are still getting the 10,000 from the tenant but the question is is the 10,000 fully going to your pocket no it's still you still need to pay the home loan you still need to pay the rates you still need to pay the levers and after that you need to consider that okay out of this 10,000 my expenses are 7,000 rand so your profit is actually only 3,000 rand so a lot of people they'll take the TEFL 10,000 and they think that but that is my return on investment no that's not your return on investment that is your revenue it's not your profit return on investment works on profit so everything after the expenses how much are you left with so don't think because you're getting a rental income of 10,000 you are making 10,000 rand always consider the expenses that you need to take out everything that you have spent at that particular month for maintaining the property any cost that went into the property you need to minus it and then get a full profit and how much you are really making from that rental um, or that property investment the fourth one it's that a lot of property investors they don't work on their interest on their credit profile and not working on your credit profile and if you're gonna apply having a low credit profile unfortunately you are going to have a high interest rate and what does that mean interest rate eats away from the money that you're supposed to be getting because this loan it's not going to be more expensive on your side and unfortunately Going back to number one, the area where you're buying the property, you can only charge a certain amount of money. And when you're charging that a certain amount of money, you find out that almost 70% or 80% of your rental income is actually going to pay the home loan. And sometimes over 100%. Now you also need to take out money from your own pocket to go and um, add on it so that you can be able to pay the home loan because of what? You worked on your high interest rate because you did not work on your you did not work on your credit profile to at least make it better when it comes to interest rate. So make sure that before you go and apply, how is your interest rate looking? Are you going to be able to get this loan that is going to make you money at a lower interest rate possible? Don't ignore that because the higher the interest rate, the less money you're going to get from the rental income that you're going to be um, receiving. And then it means that you might end up running at a negative cash flow because remember we are investing here investment it's all about making money we don't invest for status we invest for one main reason to have growth in our finances that money must make money for you investor and again the one that we spoke about getting lower interest rate so i made an example here this is um, a person lower interest rate and uh, and uh, return on investment how does a lower interest rate helps you as a property investor in terms of uh, getting more money. Ne? So this is now example number one. This person has a loan of one million rand. Ne? There is uh, it's a loan of one million rand, and let me quickly. And every they have eleven percent, eleven percent interest rate. There are repayments. The repayments are going to be ten thousand three hundred and ninety. Ne? Let's go to the second one. We'll, we'll just interchange the two. Example two, this person has 13, uh, gotten 13% 13 interest rate because of their credit profile. And look at their repayment. It's the same amount of loan. It's the same amount of loan, but because of their interest rate, you, of their credit profile, they got 13%. So now, me and somebody, we are now uh, buying in the same, complex. So we're buying the same as a gritty estate or a complex. It's one million, it's one million. Because of my credit profile, 
I, I got 13%, the other person got 11%. The rental income is the same in terms, we can only charge a certain amount of money for us to, to, to rent that place out. So, example one, ne, rental income is 16,000. Ne? And then home loan, they're paying 10,391. Levels, let's say they're paying 2,000 rent. Rates, they're paying 600 rent. Maybe other expenses, maintaining and all those things, they're paying 1,000 rent. The net rental income, the net profit they're getting, it's 2009, ne? on this example. The second example, same thing, but the difference is the interest rate because of the credit score. Same example again, rental is 16,000. Now their home loan is more. They are paying 11,700. And then their levels is the same, rates are the same, other expenses are the same. And then that other person, because of their high interest rate, I am, I am now getting 615, but my neighbor, in the same complex, in the same, what everything is the same except our credit score, she's getting 2009. So that's where you building your credit profile is gonna help you in getting a, a, a investment on your property because it determines how expensive it's gonna be for you to get this loan that is gonna help you to get this property which is gonna help you to make money. So do you now see the difference? A whole, uh, how much, 1.4? that you could have saved by working on your credit profile because you could have gotten less interest rate. Fifth and the last one is that people when they buy the properties, they buy their properties looking at them as for personal use. When you're going to buy properties for investment, you don't look at the aesthetics only, or you don't even look at aesthetics. You don't even look at what you like. You look at the fact that, will this make me money? A lot of people, depending on where you are buying the property, other people, they don't even care about the aesthetics. They just need a place to stay because they um, it's closer to work. They will rather have a place that is closer to work. Definitely, it should have good security and all those necessary things. But people end up buying because I like the tile. You might like the tile, but will that tile make you money? No, just because your property has the most beautiful tile, will that get you a, a, a tenant? No, it might not get you a tenant. So don't go in buying this property for investment, having the same mentality as somebody who's buying a property they're gonna stay in. It's not about what you like, it's about what's going to make you money. What are people looking for around here? What are people looking for? Are they looking for a place where it's closer to schools, closer to, to, to malls? What are they actually looking for? You can't go now with your with this property that has all the aesthetics that you want but it's away it's so far away from everything that somebody must still travel pay petrol to and also have traffic to come to work then it means that majority of people they won't come and rent from your property because unfortunately it's an inconvenience for them so stop looking at it with your personal eyes and saying i love this it's big it's i'm buying it because you know that the roofing looks nice no 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 it might look nice but it should not end there is it gonna make you money don't go with feelings when you're buying a property for investment you buy with feelings when you're buying a property for you to stay because it has to do with you but this one it has to do with the person that has to come and stay and give you money it has to do with it making money for you not you liking it um aesthetics and again the other adding on that you find out that you are gonna go and renovate and you renovate with expensive things that you like you know and you forget that it's not about what you like only it's about what is useful for the person who's coming to stay um other people there's something you need to know the area affluent people aesthetics yes that can work there but but if you're buying in Soweto, in, in places where it's not affluent, in the townships, you can't be putting priority um, aesthetics because aesthetics are not of prior, priority. People in the township, they want something that they can use and that benefit them at the end of the day. So please be mindful. We're not saying that buy ugly things, buy in a place where there's no security, but consider the fact that you're not buying it for personal use. This is for business. This is a property investment. Those are five mistakes that you are making as a property investor that is costing you money. I hope 
you learned something i hope as you're gonna go into this journey of investing in property you now know things that you need to avoid so that you can start making money and again guys property investment just like any investment it is i think this is gonna be the bonus one people don't consider the risk when they are doing property investment guys in investment that's why there is something called risk appetite before you can get into any investment because in each and every investment there is a risk of you making money and you losing money a lot of people that go into it thinking i just I'm, i'm gonna make money but they don't consider the risk they don't consider the risk of saying what what what's going to happen if i don't have a tenant for six months do i have money in place that i have saved up as a capital for those rainy days where i don't have tenants and again other mistakes that people do i think i'm going to add uh, this is going to be part of the bonus one lease agreement people don't do lease agreements a tenant can come in and go out as much as they want and people again the deposit money that they take they go and use it you are not supposed to use the deposit money you actually supposed to take that money you put it in an interest bearing account and that money is gonna help you in rainy days. So people think deposit money, it's money that they can use um, for their own personal use, going back to confusing revenue and profit. So you need to know all these things because they, it's a risk. If a tenant wakes up and say they're leaving and you don't have a lease agreement in place, it means that you need to pay for that particular for the next month if you don't get a tenant. But if they give you 30 days, 60 days notice, they give you time to look for other tenants and then not have to take money out of your pocket. And if it happens, because it's like a business, when you are selling something, it's not a guarantee that everybody's going to buy. There will be time that you don't have tenants. What's going to happen? Do you have money aside that you can take? and pay for the home loan because unfortunately the bank it's a business whether you you have a tenant or not at the end of the month they need their installment so what do you have in place because that is the risk that comes with being a landlord people don't consider that other people they do stay with their properties for six months without any tenant and the bank will need the money the rate still needs to be paid the labor still needs to be paid these things are not saying you only pay as you use no you pay as long as you're owning this property whether the property you're staying there if there's a tenant or not as long as you've signed and say this is my property those are the bills that you need to pay so don't forget to make you to know about them number one and also to make provision for that risk in the event that it happened so i hope this helps you um as always you know in this community sharing is caring because you will be helping somebody out there who who maybe is a property investor and they're wondering i'm not making money (laughs) where am i getting it wrong so this is going to help them or maybe it's an aspiring property investor and they want to go and get properties using a home loan and they don't even know that they need to consider this so that they don't have make mistakes that people are making and losing money in property because just like an investment you can lose money in property so guys thank you so much for joining me don't forget to like don't forget to comment ask questions comment whatever experience you have in property and again guys if you really need to know more about property investing i'm gonna link you know a a page that you must follow which is called non wealth they are property investors they share the good the bad and the ugly of being a property investor they don't focus only on rental income they will also show you about how do you flip what are the things that you need to look at when you're buying a property do you buy a property using your personal capacity or using a trust or using a business so please go and also subscribe on this page follow them they're gonna teach you about property investing so thank you so much guys i will see you on my next video i love you guys bye